Hi, I'm going to demonstrate the integration between SecureAuth, which is a token-based authentication system using SSL certificates, and Access Policy Manager. So I have the SecureAuth server behind a virtual server on my Access Policy Manager, and I also have a protected web resource on a virtual server behind my Access Policy Manager. And what I want to do is check to see if I have a valid certificate that was issued by the SecureAuth server and I want to check the user ID in that certificate and if that certificate is good then I want to go ahead and ask for the user ID and password check that against the AD server and allow the person to access the backend resource. If on the other hand the person does not have a valid certificate then I want to send them to the SecureAuth enrollment server. So let's just go ahead and demonstrate this. I'm going to connect to the virtual server at 10.10.1.101. Now I get a certificate warning just because I haven't installed the certificates on my APM and of course in a production environment you would want to do that. So this message is actually coming from the Access Policy Manager. It's checked to see if I have a certificate, and I don't. So I get a message that says, I'm sorry, you don't have a valid certificate. Please continue to log in. So at this point, the policy actually redirects me to another virtual that's also protected by another APM access policy. So I'm going to go ahead and log in as student one. Now I could have the SecureAuth server unprotected where you could simply get directly to the enrollment server and enter your user ID, but I've chosen to place it behind the APM policy so that I ensure that only authenticated users can get to this step. And in this case, the users were authenticated against my internal AD server. So, in my profile for my Active Directory user under Student 1, I have uh, three pieces of information here, the email and phone, and I can use either voice or SMS to verify, um, to, to receive my code. So, it can either email me, text me, or give me a call. I'm going to go ahead and choose, give me a call hit submit so I'm getting a call from the secure auth server your one time password is two zero nine five hello Tony your one time password is two zero nine five Hello, So the system called me and told me that my one-time password is 2095. Let me go ahead and put that in. And now uh, this is actually going to authenticate me against the AD server before it gives me the certificate. So this is where we get two-factor authentication initially. And at this point, it's going to add the certificate to my browser. So I'm going to click on the close all browsers, as it says, and reopen my browser. Let's go ahead and look and see where it put that certificate. So tools, internet options, content, certificates. And there I see my certificate issued by SecureAuth. So now that I have a valid certificate for student one, I can log into the APM virtual again and access my protected web resource. So this time you see that the website you want to view request identification, please choose a certificate. I'm going to use student one, click OK. 
And now the APM says my certificate is good. Another thing I check, I want to check to see that this is my OU. It could be a certificate that was signed by SecureAuth, but is not for my particular organization. So I do want to check that. I pulled the username straight out of the certificate and I displayed that in a message box here. And now it's going to ask me for my AD password. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Access Policy Manager will then authenticate me against my internal AD server and provide me with access to the protected resource. And so now I can surf away here uh, at the uh, protected resource and gain access to the backend server. So here I am on my Access Policy Manager and I have imported the root certificate here under the SSL certificates. So now that I have that root certificate I need to configure my SSL profile. So if I go to Profiles, SSL, Clients, Certificates, I've chosen to call it SecureAuth-ClientSSL. So here what I've changed is uh, the client certificate. I set it to request. Frequency is once. And my advertised certificate authority is the secure auth root certificate authority server. If I click on advanced, you'll see that I also set trusted certificate authorities to secure auth root. And if we go back here and look at my SSL certificates, you can see that I have defined secure auth root here as the one containing the MFA root 3 certificate. Next I have a virtual server. So I've configured my virtual server to listen at 10.10.1.101 on port 443. It has an HTTP profile and most importantly it has the client SSL profile with the secure auth certificate authority information configured therein. And an access profile of secure auth. So let's go ahead and look at the access profile. So the first step in my access profile at this point is the client certificate inspection. This is quite easy to configure. You simply add a client certificate inspection box and um, leave it at the default settings. <clears throat> now what I did was I inserted a message box here that says, I'm sorry you don't have a valid certificate. And then I created a redirect. So if I go to edit endings here I will see the redirect internal that I created ending and it's sending it to HTTPS 10.10.1.100 slash secure auth 1 which is the other virtual server one thing that's very important that you want to do is click on this close session after redirect what this does is it actually closes the existing session and makes sure that somebody can't come back in with those with that session again. We don't want to keep that open. So this is just a message box that says your certificate was good. A lot of these things I could do all in the same step. 
but I've chosen to do them in separate steps for demonstration purposes. I created an empty action and called it check OU. And then in my branch rule, I have an expression which says compare session.ssl.cert.subject and see if it contains my OU. I could actually obtain this OU from my session report. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So next thing I do is grab the username from the certificate. And this is basically a regular, regular expression that looks at the session.ssl.cert.subject field and strips off the part that says CN equals before the comma and returns that as the username. And so I'm setting session dot logon dot last dot username that's a special variable within APM that contains the username to the value of that certificate to what's between the CN equals and the comma which in this particular case is student one so now in my message box I say username is percent brace session dot logon dot last dot username. So as the administrator I can see what the username was. If you wanted to have a personalized greeting for the user with information from the certificate, this is how you would do it. So one further step that I did was I actually set the username in the logon page to be a read-only field. Because this is being populated by the certificate, I don't want somebody to be able to log in as student 2 or student 3 with a student 1 certificate. It would be a good idea after this, after successful authentication, to again check the username that was validated against the certificate and make sure that they, they match. Of course, you could do all this right after the logon page as well. But we do want to make sure that the certificate, the username in the certificate is the same as the one that was entered on the logon page. I've chosen to do it with a static field. So at this point, if we fail AD authentication, then we're going to deny the user but if they succeed, then we allow them. So now if I go and look at the session report for this particular user, student one, I can see the results here. And I want to look at the session variables. So the one I'm interested in this particular case is session.ssl.cert.valid. This is actually set to zero if it's a valid certificate. And the one that I pulled the username from was session.ssl dot cert dot subject and you see that this is also what contained my OU information as well. So using this information I was able to verify that it was student one and that it was coming from my organization and not somewhere else. And of course there are a number of other fields here that we could check. such as X509 extension. Thank you.